<laughs> and welcome back to Linux Weekly Daily Wednesdays, where we sit back, relax, Hello. take that midweek break, and talk about all the fun things going on in the world of Linux, open source. I'm Vin. That's Joe. That's Pedro. And uh, Hello. that's Shadrill. They got a new bot to play with. It's terrifying. Stay yeah. out of Discord, um, at least for like 30 minutes. <laughs> then they'll get tired of it and go back to idling. Hey, everyone. How's it going? <laughs> It is the holidays, man. The Christmas, yes. the Hanukkahs, the Kwanzas, and man, somehow we put a show together for your, yeah. your enjoyment. Before we get into that, we always like to share, you know, what has transpired in our life since last week. And Pedro, <laughs> you have a bloodborne machine. Yeah. Yes. Yes, <laughs> I do. So, uh, I gave um, coworker Dave my old FX motherboard and the processor and the RAM that went with it. It's like, okay, so how much were you going to sell this for? It's like, yeah, about 120 pounds ish. It's like, I'll give you one of my PS4s. Hmm. Nice. PS4. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so it's it's gonna be a Bloodborne machine almost exclusively, at least for uh, till I beat the game. Then then I might play with throwing some Linux on it, see how cool. fail overflows uh, shim is doing. This is, mm -hmm. you're going to get that pre-brick experience. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> Probably. <laughs> Joel, what's going on, man? Uh, oh, boy, a lot. So I was on Big Daddy Linux Live European Edition Saturday, and yesterday on two really fun episodes of Linux Unplugged, uh, and one was recorded pre-recorded for the holidays and enjoyed watching and chatting with Popey and Wimpy on their new series, 8-Bit Versus, on Twitch. Go check it out. Oh, um, they play retro great games, Popey on his ZX Spectrum versus Wimpy on his Commodore 64. And yesterday here at LGC and at Jupiter Broadcasting, we raided 8-Bit Versus. So that was really awesome. So that was good timing on them, uh, starting their yes. stream just as I finished mine. <laughs> oh, <yeah>. Exactly. <laughs> That was yeah. Uh, that was like, so much how fun. How does raid work? And if you were watching Pedro's <laughs> stream, it was like, let me learn how to use this management board. I created a poll with the same question. <laughs> it was like, yes, it, yes. <laughs> someone voted too. Thank you very much. Oh, I'm, I'm waiting for my network noodles. My like two point five. What? No, what, they're three meters, three point five meter long um, cables to finish doing some of this networking voodoo. Uh, I did post a video for your Patreon, some behind the scenes, a mm -hmm. day in the life of me going, it's great. Watch me descent into madness of like, <laughs> everything's broke. Everything's on fire. The, maybe you're familiar with the point Jackbox was on its side plugged in. So that's never a good <laughs> sign. That, and if you've ever had any experience building computers, that that's the open heart surgery part of uh. Like, oh, something's really wrong because it's powered uh -huh. on. And it's on its side. Like, oh, everything is kind of working. We still have one more thing we have to play with. But people are allergic to wool. <laughs> <laughs> I've known yes. this. You know, I'm typically one that'll wear a wool sweater, but it's clearly a wool sweater. And oh boy. people will avoid that, <laughs> but they never see anything. But they're like, oh, I can't get near. I have this nice coat that's like a really fine, it doesn't look wool until you try to hug me. <laughs> <laughs> so I've been collecting data points with this coat for three, four weeks now. Like, oh, that's wool. It makes me itchy. Like, thank you. Mental note. So, um... <laughs> I guess you could say I've kind of been war wooling, but it, it, it's <laughs> nice to know because I, I'm not anti touchy feely, but like, don't hug me. <laughs> All right. Oh, <laughs> that's kind of a fun thing that has been surprising. It's like, hey, how's it? Ah, neat. <laughs> I like Aww, this. Oh, <laughs> I couldn't hug you, Vin, either. I'm so allergic, I break out in hives. I'm saying that like it's a bad thing. Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Let's talk about eight more bad things uh, pertaining to Linux, man, pertaining to Linux, because we're going to talk about the worst open source yeah. innovations. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know if we really want to call all of these bad, but yeah. our roster mm -hmm. is going to be the Steam Machine, Ubuntu Unity, Ubuntu Phone, Ubuntu Edge. Uh, man, we're not even going to address that one. 
Dis- <laughs> Diaspora. Diaspora. Yeah, man, I can't do that one. <laughs> Rethink DB, Samsung Dex. Mm-hmm. Oh, how we loved you. Not really. Honorable mention, Hannah Montana. Hey, man, watch it. Yeah. I'll cut you. Uh, <laughs> Hannah Montana, <laughs> Linux. So, Jill, let's start off with your take on the Steam Machines. Yeah. Well, st- uh, there are many reasons why Steam Machines fail, but one is w- one of which was they were too expensive, and Valve just didn't do a good job at advertising them very well. Even on the on the day, the big day, they they would come up on their um, on the Steam client. Uh, they weren't doing much advertising outside of their Steam client, so <laughs> that was interesting. And then also, Ubuntu's Unity desktop actually ended up being really good, but it just took a long time before it became performant and baked in. Mm. So, uh, yeah, that definitely was a thing. <laughs> Man, mm-hmm. let's look at this. Uh, because we all got some feels about that list. We're like, ooh, that one wasn't too bad. You're like, hey, don't talk bad about that one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and others are like, I'm glad that's gone. One that we definitely <laughs> talked about on this show was Dex because they're like, mm-hmm. yes. we're, we're going to kill that. And I think that has a lot more to do with like, just the, we were sold the bill of goods of convergence. Mm-hmm. Yes. And that hasn't really become a thing in any meaningful way, you know, from three or four years ago, we're like, that's a great idea. And coming into 2020, it's going like, yeah, that'll be a great idea eventually. So uh, distributed social networks. I don't think that's ever going to work unpopular opinion <laughs> i know uh send your hate mail to pedro at linuxgamecast.com <laughs> yes of course <laughs> uh, to the steam machines marketing okay fair enough but you can go back and listen to linux gamecast weekly all those years ago i think the primary mm-hmm. reason steam machines they failed because the technology wasn't ready at the yeah. time <laughs> It just wasn't. And I'm talking about things like Vulcan. I'm talking about things like DXVK and especially New Hotness, which is a year old now, Proton. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> and they were they're terribly underpowered. And the ones that weren't underpowered were wicked expensive. Hi, Falcon Northwest. Mm-hmm. How you doing? <laughs> what about the $1,000 yeah. console? Um, yeah. <laughs> with the Ubuntu phone, beer, and all that. Listen, man, I love them. Canonical is going to canonical. All right. <laughs> and I, I've mm-hmm. been on record saying I uh, do have a little bit of the sads that they're dialing back on the moonshot stuff because somebody had to try it. And <laughs> they yeah. were the company out there. Yeah. And you'd be like, I think that's not a very good idea, but I'm try it though. Because you got to take risk. You don't know what's going to stick unless you're Pedro. Pedro mm-hmm. doesn't know what's going to stick. <laughs> well, I might stick, depending on how hard you throw me. But um, yeah, only six of the eight could technically be called open source because Dex wasn't open source. It ran an open source operating system, but the technology very much was not. Mm-hmm. The Steam machines were not open source at all. I mean, again, they technically ran Linux, but they were not open source at all. <laughs> So it's, I realize that I'm being petty, but this is one of those end of year lists that's, and that this is the kind of reaction that uh, these lists elicit in me. It's like, okay, so if we're just going to be pulling the minimum amount of effort to create content for a website at the end of a year, okay, then I'm going to be petty. <laughs> there. I, yeah. <laughs> I intend this complete lack of surprise. Um, <laughs> Google now bans some Linux web browsers from their service because they're bad and they're evil. And oh, we're just talking about Conqueror and um, Falcon. Falcon. Yeah. Um, yeah. Oh, <laughs> yes. to, to which I immediately went, are those still. Yeah. maintained period to which I yes. did my little bit of research and I'm like technically yes they have been maintained <laughs> technically not dead yet <laughs> yeah there, there has been some activity in the past 300 plus days on both of those projects <laughs> yeah in fact uh, June of 2018 um, they have a very uh, Conqueror has a very slow release cycle but it does have one 
<laughs> and that's really good. Mm. And, you know, I, I think this actually will be fixed soon. It might take the next release cycle of Conqueror. <laughs> <laughs> but I think it will be fixed and because Google wants all users to be able to log into its services via any web browser and is usually browser agnostic as long as the browser is up to date. <laughs> hmm. I don't know, Pedro. Uh, do you think the easy, easy way around? First off, I mean, if you're using Falcon, <laughs> you, use something modern like Moonlight or whatever the... What, <laughs> Midori. Midori. Um... <laughs> Can you just switch your user agent? Because I, I did a little bit of reading on this and everyone's like shrug emoji on what exactly is triggering this. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the, from my reading, I don't have uh, Conqueror installed. I, I didn't even know what Falcon was and cute browser. Well, let's just say you probably wouldn't catch me using that particular one. Uh, but yeah, it's um, from what I read, apparently changing the user agent didn't seem to make any mm. difference. Uh, it's just whenever people try to log on to their Google accounts using any of those uh, three browsers, they just mm -hmm. couldn't. And, you know, I think this is less about uh, some of the FUD that's been going around about, ah, uh, oh, Google is banning Linux browsers. Like, no, no, I, I don't think it's about them banning Linux browsers. It's about them banning those two browsers or three browsers in particular because they don't want to deal with support for it. Mm. it they're probably doing something that google's like yeah we don't want to support that so yeah yeah mm -hmm. that, that's google man but hey don't worry hopefully we'll be able to run edge and leave all of our worries behind <laughs> yes january right <laughs> <laughs> I, I, yeah. I'm waiting for that curiosity. It's like, oh, I got to try it. I got to see what our web zone looks like on that. But <laughs> Yeah, and speaking of Conquer. <laughs> and KDE, yes, right? Yeah, yeah, and KDE. Um, this is awesome. This is the Trinity desktop environment. It maintains the old school look and feel of KDE 3, but with modern applications and drivers. Um, I've personally always loved using KDE3, and I'm so happy that the Trinity desktop environment stays true to its user experience. And they still have a Conqueror in there, not Dolphin. So Conqueror, both as a file manager and web browser, I grew to love and was impressed by his prog progressive dual workflow. At first, I remember when I started using it on KDE, I didn't care for it. And then I just got used to how fast the workflow was from, you know, uh, browsing web pages uh, to managing files. And I found it very convenient. And I was sad when it was, was um, when it was taken out of uh, KDE mainline. So, you know, this is just uh, go ahead and try the Trinity desktop environment. It's really a lot of fun. You can try it on uh, live CDs or USBs or just install it in your distro of choice. And, and you could get um, a very jarring experience yeah. of what it was yeah. like to run KDE 3. <laughs> it's Aww, like, oh, everything it. looked that blocky? You yes. Have... All right. <laughs> but it was fast. <laughs> it was, yes. <laughs> can get off my lawn. KDE 3 is what I tapped out because I, I used to, that, that was my preferred desktop environment, KDE. And like right up to 4, mm -hmm. I just went, oh, no. <laughs> yeah. <Never came> back. <laughs> yeah, KDE 4 was a buggy mess and they didn't really fix it until they hit like 4.9 at which point it actually became a very very nice uh desktop environment. Uh and yeah, the it's the developers that were responsible for KDE 4.0. They only have themselves to blame for a fork mm -hmm. like Trinity existing. You know, much yes. like the GNOME 3 developers only have themselves to blame for Mate and Cinnamon and um, <laughs> Budgie and Pantheon. You get the picture. <laughs> yeah, very true, Fredro. <laughs> <laughs> that list goes on. <laughs> yes, it does. <laughs> so what is the best KDE distribution of 2019? 
<laughs> Speaking of uh, vapid end of year <laughs> lists, uh, this one comes from Dead Eye Meadow, and uh, well, it's uh, he's got all the contenders of uh, the dis uh, the distros that he had a look at this year that feature the KDE desktop. He's got KDE Dion 515, uh, Kubuntu 1904, uh, OpenSUSE Leap 15.1, Manjaro 1804. In my head, and, these uh, are the default wallpapers. No, they're not. No, no. <laughs> and uh, Kubuntu um, 1910. Yeah, that, that one I think is um, a default one. Yes. And according to him, uh, the winner is uh, Kubuntu 1910. <laughs> How can he tell the difference? Yeah. <laughs> uh, it's basically he has like a suite of tests that he runs and basically he pokes at things until they break. Uh, and a lot of... Um, distro developers and desktop environment developers really don't appreciate that because it's like no one would ever use it like that just like yeah but this is a thing that happens if you do it so uh i'm i'm old enough to where i don't say stupid things like no one would ever use it like that yeah I, I've, <laughs> you're I've, using it wrong I, that, that whole argument is just yeah. no. <laughs> weapons grade stupid exist and it's out there um jill yeah uh, but yeah 1910 wins yeah yeah well i also am personally um impressed with how slick manjaro kde is i honestly i think it's the best implementation implementation of kde plasma i think they they nailed it with that one it 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 has all the KDE bells and Neon whistles would like a word <laughs> yeah <laughs> i know the actual developers I like of that kde one too. yeah <laughs> 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 but the Manjaro is just it's so slick and it runs so smooth it's it's beautiful and I also liked chaos chaos is also a fast and lean KDE distro that is independent and has beautiful it's got really beautiful wallpapers the artists on there are magnif magnificent so yeah those are my two favorites <laughs> yeah I, I've just never really been a fan of um, spins you know, <laughs> Fedora's got spins, Aww. Ubuntu's got spins, and like, oh, no, I'm spin, Katie spin, like that. And I don't even get that to the point of, I, I just find them wholly unnecessary. I've never ran a distribution that lacked the ability to install a different desktop manager. That has never hmm. been like, ooh. And to my point, <laughs> I do believe that adds some confusion because I see people attack Linux the first time, and I mean attack by like tackling, taking it on, thinking of it in a very Windows-centric type of like, oh, so this is like the Windows 7, this is the Windows 8, and this would be the one. No, it's, it's, it's all <laughs> the one thing. You just install what you want on top of it. And like your KDE mm -hmm. spin, yeah. what's the difference between <laughs> that? Like one command, son, one command. Um, <laughs> I, I kind of think it adds to the confusion unpopular opinion i know but <laughs> it is nonetheless mine but hey if really the i think the best kde spin is the one you currently have yeah very yeah. good then <laughs> positivity yes <laughs> <laughs> they finally fixed it. It only took them 16 uh, major releases of KDE this time around to get it right. But hey, they got there. <laughs> oh, no, no way am I endorsing running KDE. That's no. <laughs> that, that's almost as bad as Gnome. Ooh, let's piss everyone off. Uh, celebrating 10 years of Tales. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Yes, 10 years hey. of tales. It's the, yes, <laughs> I got a little bit distracted. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it, it is the amnesiac um, distribution that basically rose to popularity after that uh, one video where Edward Snowden talked about it a lot. And they actually have some screenshots in the mm -hmm. article. Uh, and yeah, it's basically, they, they tell the story of, it's like from two, uh, 2009 to 2010, it was called Amnesia. And then uh, they changed it to Tales with the A in uh, parentheses. It's like, oh yeah, that looks uh, pretty badass, but uh, we can't really roll with that. So they just renamed <laughs> it as Tales. And uh, one of the things they bring up, is like, people keep spelling it as Tales with all caps. It's not, it's just a capital T, That that's it. So yeah, it's uh, it's available and um, 
You can go download the latest version. It uses Tor, obviously. Oh, and nice. uh, that's where the T comes from. And um, the um, yeah, it, it also had a, a way to disguise itself, similar to what um, Kali Linux has now. And I remember when they introduced the Windows 10, um, basically, no, not the Windows 10, the Windows 8, that you hit that button and it would change to Windows 8. The computer mm -hmm. I was trying it on at the time, it was so <laughs> slow that it took a full three minutes before the screen became usable again. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it's a uh, it's one of those distros that you run directly off of a USB flash drive or an SD card, and the moment you unplug it, it's one of the safety features that it has is the computer shuts down. It's like phew, gone, and mm -hmm. it doesn't save anything to your hard drive. It's all in flash. Well, I mean, if you were running Windows, isn't there like probability that it could happen just by removing flash media? I mean, that could happen the moment you log into Windows. Oh, okay. It's like nope. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And you know what's really cool about Tails is many Linux users got their first start using this privacy focused VPN Tor services because of Tails. So, you know, that really uh, gained a lot of popularity with Tails. And uh, yep. it's nice to see the Tor browser everywhere. <laughs> The Tor browser is definitely one of those things I've looked at. That's a great, and the Tor network is much faster. If you've been yes. around for a minute, you're like, oh, Tor, ooh, that is going to take you. <laughs> that, that's like being on a bad dial-up connection. But now oh, yeah. it, it, it's never going to be as fast as you, you know, your current internet. But I mean, it is a lot better. And, you know, everyone recommends running, you know, if you're going to be running Onion and all that, a integrated solution. So you don't cock it up, basically. And yep. <laughs> I have no reason to use mm -hmm. it, but I'm glad it exists. Yes. Yeah, no, I very it's much awesome. come back to my um, commodity and secure Linux distro of choice uh, after I'm done playing with it. Because, yeah, it's, I'm sure some people actively need it, mm -hmm. but I'm mm -hmm. not in that position, thankfully. <laughs> this is good uh, audio mm -hmm. stuff. Yeah, yes. so this is FreeAct version 1.1 beta 1, a free audio converter and CD ripper that has just been released on Linux. Yay, I was happy to hear that. This uh, FreeAct supports many popular formats and encoders, including the usual MP3, WMA, AUG Vorgus, FLAC, AAC, WAVE, etc. And I actually used to use this app on Windows to rip CDs in the early 2000s. Yeah, <laughs> when that was a thing. And, um, you know, I, I'm actually so happy it is available on Linux as a snap, flat pack, or an app image if you prefer. And actually this release is quite huge and also comes with multi-threaded support for faster processing. And another really cool thing is when you were ripping your CDs, remember those pesky hidden tracks on CDs that were hard to make backups of? What's a CD? Well, FreeAC, <laughs> a compact disc. <laughs> it's a coaster, Ben. It's a coaster. Oh, coasters. Um, I remember those. I, yeah, <laughs> I have them behind me, which you can't see in my camera right now. They're up a little bit above, but I, but I have literally thousands um <laughs> so this is <laughs> so and uh yeah so now you can rip those hidden tracks the ht ao oa tracks and i used to have a lot of cds that came with those hidden tracks with special features and whatnot and you know now that freeac is available on the nixes they added support for reading and write writing vorbis files with the dot oga extension so this is all, you know, very, very wonderful. I was happy to hear this. <laughs> I downloaded the app image. I wanted to give it a try. I'm like, what's this? You know, it's audio stuff. So natural. I'm like, okay, I'll poke you with a stick. What are you? Open it up. <laughs> it's like, is, what, what's the widget set? Is this just Java? Because it reminded me of like a LimeWire <laughs> interface or like TK. Yes. Yes. Uh, <laughs> you know, it kind of looks like Audacity with a bunch of extra steps thrown in. Mm -hmm. well, yeah, for conversion, it, it, it wasn't as easy. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, less about the audio editing and more mm -hmm. about the audio transcoding. Think of it like yeah. an FFmpeg GUI, except it's not using FFmpeg, it's using Bucca. Yeah, like so, when you yeah. drive any <laughs> audio in Audacity and Control shift -E and just save it as whatever you want it to. Yes. Kind of like that. But this is meant to do that on bulk. <laughs> well, you know... Mm -hmm. To to its credit, it it's got an interface. Even though I think FFmpeg's got a slightly better UI, but all right. 
<laughs> it's a command line yeah. UI, but yeah. <laughs> but you, you have a good point, though, man. I mean, I mean this is a, mm -hmm. the kind of teeny tiny small application that, you know, the wind peeps um, use a lot over in Windows. Mm -hmm. And if you want them to start waddling around like a penguin and use the Linuxes, then yeah. you can't need this stuff. It's the teeny yeah. tiny little things. <laughs> Gooies. They're what's for yeah. dinner. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Librem Yay. servers. Yes. Mm. Purism <laughs> and beautiful, secure, and privacy respecting laptops and phones, which we've definitely talked about on this show on multiple occasions. They got an announcement. Uh, they're making servers. Well, they got a server. It's got the pure beauty. It's got the easy security verification, customizable enterprise support, and it's from Librem, so it's also got a price mm -hmm. tag on it. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying, let's take a look at it. It's the Librem server, and it's customizable. You know, this is your standard 1U rack uh, business like mm -hmm. this. Uh, kind of neat, though. I mean, look at it, and you're like, that's a super micro case fit. I'm like, yeah, it is. Uh, but... <laughs> It's got their custom firmware. It's got the tampered, evident boot process and all that stuff that you would expect from Purism device. It just ain't cheap. But I, mm -hmm. I like mm -hmm. something like this. Like if you were definitely in the um, situation where that type of security is necessary, it's good to have like this, you know, a completely open platform that you can trust. Yes. And you're thinking, hey, man, mm. I'm seeing like Xeon processors and stuff like that on the list. Yes, but it's been lobotomized. The ME's been lobotomized. So yep. mm -hmm. there's a market for that. I mean, mm. they're not outrageous. I mean, we're starting at like $26.99 mm -hmm. for... If, if it's something that will have some kind of expected support, like, you know, you would expect for a server, mm -hmm. yeah, $2,700 is not inconceivable. No. Not for something at all. Yeah. It's a completely open <laughs> stack, you know. There's no, yeah. Yeah. you know, black mo box magic and like curiosity. To listen, purism. Thinking about building a uh, one-time deal. Send me one of those. I'll send you a T-shirt. <laughs> Bear trade. Uh, yes. <laughs> this month only, and uh, we'll just call it evens. <laughs> Well, I think uh, this is actually a really smart way for purism to utilize their pure boot technology and capitalize on it. Mm -hmm. um, when you, ha if you're a business who is, you know, focused on security and firmware issues, or or not wanting firmware updates, uh, this is uh, a, a good option. Mm -hmm. Okay, so since this was a positive story, I gotta be a jackhole about it. It's like anything to throw people off the scent of Deliberum 5. It's like, let's just oh. put something out there. Anything. <laughs> Pedro. Man, I'm just saying purism. If you there. head over to store.linuxgamecast.com, you can get one of our amazing t shirts and uh, share the distortion, Yay. confuse your friends, anger your enemies. We do have a mm -hmm. gang of things, like we have our Hellhawks, we got our face-off shirt, we have the classic LWDW, and of course the Francophile. <laughs> Frank loves that one. Um, yes. <laughs> use me, mm -hmm. Hail Santa. We got mugs, we got stickers, and uh, we have a pillow. Accidentally, they threw that in <laughs> yes. when I was making the Hail Santa shirt, and I was like, you know yeah. what? <laughs> you know what? We're going to keep it. And we did. <laughs> If you're listening right now, you can get this just in time for Christmas. Uh, if you enter Santa, you get 10% off today. So if you're watching live and if you're listening to it this afternoon, you're doing the show on a Wednesday, you get that extra 10% off. That's the thing. Yay. Look at that. Marketing. <laughs> Yay. Nice. Um, Yay. <laughs> if you do like what we do, head over to uh, letting, uh, no, patreon.com forward slash Linux Gamecast. Mm -hmm. That's how you can support the show. Become one of the awesome people. Hang it out in our discords and getting some extra bonus stuff that I like to throw in for everyone uh, making that happen. If not, you're like, that's not my jam. Do me a solid, like retweet this and like stick a thumb somewhere on YouTube. I don't know where. I'm not your boss. <laughs> <laughs> I think a lot of people would know where. <laughs> Shh. <laughs> Shh. 
Yay. And I suppose we do have to uh, thank Carl because Carl, Carl. decided to yes. um, raid yeah. every single wish list that we had um, listed right there uh, under the appropriate button and uh, got us all something. Mm -hmm. So, Jill, what'd yeah. you get from Carl? Oh, I got this cute plushy penguin, another one to add to my collection, and it's going to go right there. It's venomous. <laughs> I'm telling you. It's so yes. cute. <laughs> It's going to take you. Well, and... You were Steve. One of you is going to go down. Steve's Aww. going to get into that. I'm that not feeling so just well. going to dance on your grave. It's, it's, Aww, no. it's just like a horse. I, I love my penguin, Carl. Thank you so much. And he wrote, enjoy your gift from Carl. <laughs> so that's what he also wrote uh, Pedro and Ven as well. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I think he just left the default uh, Amazon message. He's like, I'm going to go through this like four times. Eh. Yeah. <laughs> I mean. Yeah. <laughs> dude. Uh, so, oh, yeah. And thanks, Carl. Uh, go back and watch yeah. Saturday. Uh, Carl got me a really nice sweater. It's very unusual. Yes. <laughs> Mad Max sweater. We love that and sweater. And some T pins for and me. Pins. <laughs> <laughs> Just waiting awesome. for the foam pads now. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm going to. Uh, I gave everyone uh, for Patreon, I gave them the behind the scenes thing. You're not getting the part where I have to pull out. See, this is why I don't organize stuff. A lot of people give me static. Like, oh, <laughs> not that I have like cables sprawled on the floor, but there's a lot of cables in the studio. Mm -hmm. And I keep yeah. them out organized. It's not like there's dust buddies or anything. Why? Because when you need to do something like I have to run two additional cables, which means that I took the time to put everything in one of those nice clip tubes. That's going to be half a day removing those three Ethernet cables to put them in the nah. tube. As yeah. opposed to going <laughs> click, click, pull, pull, pull. Well, you don't be careful pulling on these because they like to, they fish. Um, and you might pull something else <laughs> with you. Looking forward to that. So, Carl, thank you. Uh, yeah. Yes. We love you, Carl. Let's get into a slice. <laughs> A pie. Mm. a pie. Holiday pie. pie. Mm. 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 That almost looks pumpkinish. <laughs> but... <laughs> Listen, man, you and Cal you Californians with your freakish red pumpkins. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, we do have those. Yes. <laughs> so this is Pie Lexa. This is cool. Would you like the power of Amazon's Alexa or Google Assistant, but don't want to feel like something is listening to your every word or collecting no, your data? Have the fun of it, knowing somebody's <laughs> listening. No. Then yeah. building. <laughs> then building a Mycroft open source security focused voice assistant on the raspberry pi is just the ticket and you know this is a project that i've been wanting to set up with one of my raspies for quite some time because i don't like using the assistance i i will turn it on briefly on my phone but i don't i just i just don't like something always listening and collecting lots of data Look, so stocks. you can in <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah cool <laughs> That works on the pie. <laughs> it so, works on everything, let's be honest. It works on everything, yes, <laughs> yes. But this is really cool because it um, you you set up uh, my uh, uh, pie croft on the pie. You just get a get a pie with um, a speaker and mic, and there are ones that they recommend to use that already have the drivers set up for the pie. Hey, my croft, and put this on your website. You just run the software <laughs> and sign yeah. up to my croft. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> front and center, preferably. Uh, but no, my question about uh, Mycroft is still, um, does it reply if you shout, hey, Popey? I don't know. Ah, it was Popey yes. who voiced it. But if you think about yes, Mycroft, you can use it for so absolutely <laughs> free. But you can, they almost have the $1.99 a month plan to support the development of an open source assistant, one you can trust. Yes. Right? Yeah, this is awesome. This is awesome. I think this is you know? pretty cool. Home.mycraft.ai. Mm -hmm. This is going to be in the show notes along with every single thing else. I mean, this is this is a very, very detailed walkthrough. So I'm down. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 100%. And they actively awesome. recommend the PlayStation Eye camera. Mm -hmm. that, that was just yeah. a teeny tiny little tidbit that I thought was interesting. <laughs> <laughs> we do have a little bit of pie beep boop music synth, man. Yeah. Flock of pie goals. <laughs> um, Whichever it is, uh, Pink Floyd, Floyd Steinberg, whatever, man. You can make beat boop <laughs> music with your pie. Look at that. It's a Korg nano control, nano keys. You can press them. 
they go mm, and they go beep and sometimes they go poop. I think it's kind of neat, man. Scents are not my thing, but you can get some use out of these. Uh, Pedro, why don't you build one, man? Well, the, 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 <laughs> on that uh, particular video, the the dude was using the um, Korg uh, Control 2 and the Korg mm -hmm. Key 2. And those two together are like $90 or 90 pounds over here. Uh, so, yeah, the, throw that in, plus the pie and the hat and the cables. It, 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 it's not the cheapest, but considering this is a... Uh, synthesizer we're talking about uh it's probably cheaper than most single unit devices available out there <laughs> well as soon as i mm -hmm. see this oh, I, yeah. i'm glad they included this little <laughs> screenshot or this little part of the video because that's where you lose people when you start seeing you know this is qjack ctl jack yeah that's right you're gonna have to actually <laughs> learn how to set some things up don't worry jack's not scary um but that's it's his brother bob dude it <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. Setting a basic jack set on. It's simple enough for Jordan figured it out, okay? Let's just put it like yeah. that. It's not that <laughs> difficult to do. You don't have to go crazy with it. You don't have to be like slinging it over fiber optics. That'd be insane. But if you're going to do anything mm -hmm. with like MIDI controllers, like the Korg Nano Control or, you know, like yeah. uh, mm -hmm. this thing, that's just a glorified MIDI controller. And. Mm -hmm. Make your beep boop music. It'd be awesome. Yep. <laughs> no, and we do need more artists using Linux. Just yeah. to show that it's possible to not be tied to the Apple ecosystem. It Please. It is, yeah. <laughs> and I can't stress, if you're looking to get into audio music production and you want to know, go to linuxmusicians.org. Mm -hmm. Go check that Very out. Very good, Ben. Yeah. That's a great place. Oh, yeah. Wow. <laughs> Jill, do you have right. and, yeah actually i wanted to thank floyd steinberg i was really enjoying his music on on his youtube channel and thank you for keeping the berlin school of synth music alive um as a former uh kraut rock dj for many years i really appreciated that and i really enjoyed your music um all uh tangerine dream klaus schultz and mario schoenwalder and uh, thank you for using Linux and the Raspberry Pi and putting all those really good tutorial videos out there. He had a, a slew of tutorial videos oh, um, right on. on different synths. Yeah, I, and um, using oh, Linux. Nice. So that was really, really awesome. He even made some hippie music that you, you enjoyed, right? Yeah, yes. <laughs> <laughs> right hey, if you enjoy making hippie music and want to tell us about it, how could they? You can absolutely <laughs> tell us about it, host it somewhere, and then post a link on our contact uh, form. Just make sure you're sending it to LWDW, that's like the little show box that you need to uh, select right at the top. And then your name, your email, subject, and of course the message containing the aforementioned link. And yeah, just uh, let us know. And uh, if you did have something that is completely you know non-music related but you use a raspberry pi or you use linux in some way you have to know about that the, too at mm -hmm. the very minimum have to send it in form of limerick <laughs> yeah or at least write a haiku if it's not a limerick ah. just write a haiku it's fine <laughs> <laughs> all right but uh we do have um one bit of feedback from costa and he's asking a question mm -hmm. it's like okay so for several reasons, it made sense to take up the Amazon Prime ecosystem a few weeks back. The only problem is I can't seem to play Prime video over 960 by 540 on any HD screen, no matter what I do. Seemingly browser agnostic, user agent spoofing, etc. Uh, mm -hmm. Has anyone managed to play 720p or greater on a Linux-based system? If so, can someone share the recipe for the sauce? Graciars? Oh, gracias. I get it. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> <laughs> yes. Cool, sir. Uh, so, yeah, apparently uh, both Prime and Netflix uh, rely on the TPM chip in Intel systems um, and the Windows drivers for uh, that particular chip uh, to mm -hmm. render, to feel safe enough to render a video at 1080p because they're afraid that people will uh, pirate the videos. What they don't realize is if you capture the top level of the um, composited layer, that doesn't matter. But whatevs. Uh, fact of the matter is, that is a problem with the DRM. 
that they're using. Uh, mm-hmm. It's especially noticeable on Prime because on Netflix, you can sort of work around it. There's an extension for mm-hmm. Chrome and Firefox. It's literally called Netflix 1080p and uh, it works, but it, there's nothing like that for Prime that I could find. And I've been looking. Is I, I watched The Expense on Prime um, last weekend and it's like, oh, oh, that, that resolution. Mm. Mm. I have a yeah. 2560 by 1440 screen here and a UHD screen here. It did not look good on any of them. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And, and Netflix actually has stated that they only um, are, are decoding SD on, on Linux. But yeah. um, for Prime Video, and yeah, I've used the Netflix 1080p and um, extension, and it works actually pretty well. But there was one time, and this has changed. I, in fact, I just tested this last night with Firefox 72. It did not work. I downloaded the tar.gz and then mm. um, enab- enabled Winevine, and it, it, it went to SD. But um, as of like two years ago, I was able to get it to play the 1080p with with Prime Video. So they had changed yeah. that. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, that was the thing. Yeah, it's a stupid Winevine DRM, but yeah, yeah. It's, you can watch it on Linux, but uh, yeah. at a lower resolution. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, that's, that's a Chromecast. All right, yeah. you get full resolution. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> There's always a creative way around it. <laughs> mm-hmm. Hello there, MPAA. How are you? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. Aria, I didn't forget about you guys either. Hi, yes. Oh, <laughs> we love you, Carlos. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> awesome. You are awesome, Carlos. <laughs> I have some feedback about that particular, sh- well, about that particular picture. Uh, coworker <laughs> Dave was sitting next to me. It's like, um, why does it look like his? Sh- no, it's like, why does it look like the shirt was photoshopped on? And why do, why do his eyes look like they were glued on? <laughs> so, yeah, sorry, Carlos. Selfie. <laughs> <laughs> that selfie, it triggered someone. <laughs> Aww. And you can find Carlos on uh, mast.linuxgamecast.com. He is there, and he used to be very active with us on Google+. And, but now he's yes. on Twitter, so... But um, thank you so much, Carlos. That That's awesome. And you look good in that shirt. <laughs> that shirt makes everyone look good. It's yes. scientifically proven. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Wow. <laughs> Aww. And thank you to 8 Bit Versus, Popey and Wimpy for f- the follow, and Not OQ for the follow. <laughs> <laughs> Yay. <laughs> that has different uh, meaning in Portuguese. <laughs> oh, oh, okay. Sorry. I, I'm sure I butchered it. Pedro will have to say it correctly. <laughs> oh, no, no, no. I'm I'm pretty sure that person's not Portuguese. It's just that oh. those letters arranged in that way, red with a Portuguese accent, mean... Oh. Oh. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> just a little tidbit for the people who actually stay and watch the credits. Thank yeah. you. <laughs> for the 201 Yay, episodes. So Yay. Yay. <laughs> <laughs>